Welcome everybody to today's session, our next instalment in our online education series. Um, if you can hear me loud and clear, could you type a Y in the chat box and uh, you should be able to see a welcome screen uh, to email, we want traders to succeed. <clears throat> Okay, great stuff. Let's uh, let's get going. First of all, as always, we're going to um, quickly review the disclaimer. As we uh, as we're all probably aware by now, foreign exchange trading does carry a certain degree of risk. But as I say to you each week, you're helping to mitigate that risk by participating in these educational sessions. So um, just before we get started with today's content, for those of you who haven't uh, been in a session with me before, my name is Patrick Munley. I am a fund manager, a mentor and uh, a market commentator. Um, haven't always been involved in the markets. After graduating um, from university, I joined a city um, consulting firm. I subsequently left that firm and did a startup with a couple of guys from the, from the business. And um, that business experienced some rapid growth. After four to five years, I um, I exited uh, I exited the company when we merged with another business, and I cashed in my my shares, and um, and then I decided to pursue my passion for markets. I'd always been interested in markets. I'd had a pretty much a front row seat to the dot com boom and bust. I was uh, in in the consulting arena. I was a uh, a headhunter for technology startups and so I'd really seen how people could make and lose a fortune in the markets pretty much overnight and um, and so I started to day trade the e-mini S&P uh, futures. The market was predominantly trending north, I caught some lucky early breaks and uh, as is often the case um, had some, gr some good success, uh, made some solid gains but uh, that beginner's luck ran out and I quickly gave back those gains and, and then some. And uh, It was then that I decided I had to really make a conscious decision to either uh, approach the, the markets and trading as I had done with other commercial endeavors and really get serious about it or I'd walk away. And so I, uh, I sought out a mentor myself, um, worked with him and um, not just really on the technical aspects of trading and this is very important and something I uh, I allude to continually and have done throughout these sessions, um, but more importantly, the mental game, because the you know the, the, there's there's a finite amount of of technical um, knowledge you really need to be able to, to to trade the markets. But your your ultimate success is really defined by your your mental uh, your mental performance, to my mind anyway, and um, and that's something I worked on um, rigorously, and so by uh, by, that, by the, the end of 2007, going into 2008, I had a fully documented um, business and trade plan underpinned by a, a rigorous risk management strategy. I, uh, and I, I really set about executing that plan. And um, since 2008, I have delivered um, positive annual returns, so year over year basis. Um, I'm someone who has learned over time that the outcome of an, in, of, of an independent trade or a single trade is really totally irrelevant to me because what I'm looking at is, um, is, is I'm looking at an extended series of outcomes to demonstrate my edge. So I don't know if the next trade I put on is going to be a winner or a loser and the great thing is I don't need to know that to be successful. What I have to know is that do I have a definable edge in the market that's been back tested and forward tested. And if that's the case, then I have sufficient conviction to trade through any periods of, of drawdown through to new equity highs. So like I say, profitable on an annual basis since 2008. Um, in 2010, I started mentoring other traders who were, uh, who were struggling to, to turn a profit and really working with guys who, from complete novices to, um, to some guys who had left the, the trading pits in Chicago and were making the move to the screens. Um, working with those guys to really develop and tight, or, or tighten up any plan, trading plan that they did have and then working around execution strategies and, and really also again focusing on that mental aspect. Uh, since 2013 I've been managing external investor capital 
uh, through a managed account service that I run. And, um, and again, fortunately, that's been on an annual basis has delivered, uh, delivered positive annual returns and continues to, uh, to perform very well. Um, so that, that really brings me up to today. Um, I've, for the past six months, I have been a um, mentor, uh, uh, um, resident market expert, sorry, for Tickmill. Uh, delivering daily market analysis and, and uh, chart analysis. Uh, I'm also the head of trading and trader education for a, um, an online education firm called fxcareerswap.com, whereby we actually um, work with, bear with me one second, guys, I just need to send off this little bit of it. Give me one second. We're just going to know the discussion is still preliminary and no formal decision has been made with the next rig review nearly two weeks away. Reuters sources that OPEC ministers agreeing to oil cut up one and a half million barrels per day. I can't repeat that. Reuters sources that OPEC ministers agreeing an oil cut. Sorry about that, guys. Let's uh, let's continue. Bear with me. I'll just get the slide back up. I've lost the uh, slides here. Give me one second, guys, and let me just find this. Okay, let's try that again. Sorry about that. Can you see um, my, my screen again with uh, with my LinkedIn profile on there? Why in the chat box if you can? Okay, so great. Like I say, um, that brings me up to today. So I, um, I provide market analysis for Tickmill and I'm the head of trader education. Um, for a company called FX Career Swap, whereby we work with traders, developing them on, from an education perspective, and then working through to actually um, funding um, retail trading talent. But what I want to do now is just um, bring you it to speed with respect to what I want to cover today, which is uh, another trading strategy, uh, uh, a quite a well-known um, market phenomenon. Um, but people struggle to, to trade this phenomenon profitably, profitably. and that's the, at the core of the trading strategy is, um, is the pin bar. Now, some of you uh, may or may not be familiar with the pin bar. The pin bar um, takes its name from uh, the character Pinocchio um, due to the actual, how the, bot, how the, the, the tail of the, or, or the nose of the, the, the candle um, prints on the charts, it's considered to be a signal of a false move. So where a bullish pin bar will have a long tail or a long nose, which is basically a, a move that's re suggesting exhaustion in the market. So what we're seeing is that the, the market uh, moves down to, to make new lows after opening, and then we ultimately close back at the highs of the candle. So that's a bullish pin bar, a bearish pin bar. Obviously, we have the opposite effect, whereby uh, we open, we run much higher, and then we get a, a sharp reversal, and we close back towards the lows of the candle. So what again, if we th if we think back to um, some of the earlier education uh, content that we covered with respect to the idea of um, the market is constantly seeking liquidity. So what it's trying to do is find um, supply and demand balances. What these candles represent is a supply or a demand imbalance. OK, so with the bullish pin bar, price opens for whatever data period you're using. For me, it's mainly the, the daily candle. So we open um, and then price moves much lower on the day. OK, so we, we're moving significantly lower yet. Once we make a set, well, once we trade down to a certain level of demand in the market, the demand that exists at this level is outweighing the supply, 
and that's what causes this rapid reversal in price action. And then we close back up towards the highs of the day, suggesting that's where the balance is between uh, the buyers and the sellers. So the information we're getting from the bullish pin bar is that the buyers at this stage are over, or, or the, the demand in the market is overwhelming the supply, okay? Equally then with the bearish pin bar, we open, we trade much higher on the day, and then we see uh, an intraday reversal that causes us to trade back down into levels close to or at uh, where we opened, or even below where we opened uh, for an even stronger indication of reversal. And so again, what we're, what we're seeing there from a market perspective is that the, the day has opened, uh, bids have come into the market, and we've moved up through various price levels seeking adequate supply. And what's happened is we've reached a certain level and there has been overwhelming supply. And that overwhelming supply takes prices back down into the opening range and potentially uh, closing below uh, where we open on the day. So from a, from a, from a, a price, uh, price discovery perspective, what we're being told here by the market is that uh, there's, there's less likelihood of making new highs here because there is such overwhelming demand, so what we're uh, such overwhelming supply. So what we're going to have to do is try to lower prices to find sufficient demand to generate the fuel for another run at those highs. So let's just take a look at, um, at how we can how we can use the pin bar as a trading signal. So for a bullish pin bar, when we close, we enter. We can either enter on the close or we can enter just at the break of the candle. And then we're going to place a stop just below the low of the candle. Okay, so that gives us that allows a, a certain degree of risk um, that's that's logical and objective because we know from a supply and demand perspective with this bullish setup that there has been overwhelming demand at those lower levels. So from a risk reward perspective, when we're thinking about this setup, we're going to use the break of the high to signal continuing demand, and then we're going to put our protective stop just below the low of where we know there was overwhelming demand on the last test. Now, again, incredibly important here, as always, there is no strategy setup or signal that is going to deliver a winning trade every time. And like I said at the beginning, talking about my own trading, I don't, I, 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 I've reached the stage where I really don't care about the outcome of the next trade. I don't care about the outcome of the next 10 trades. I care about the outcome or I care about my edge demonstrating itself over the next month, three months, six months. But what I know is that if I apply excellence in terms of my process, then that, that, those, those outcomes will ultimately take care of themselves. So this signal, this pin bar signal, is just a signal generated by the market that suggests a higher probability of one outcome over another, okay? And this, that, that, you know, even if the pin bar is only successful as a signal, let's say four times out of 10, if you've got the right risk reward, and more often than not with these pin bars, what we're looking for is two times our, our risk reward, then this, that strategy can be fantastically profitable. So you really want to move away from the idea of um, focusing as, uh, as you will often see um, documented all over the internet, this a fantastically high win percentage, because the win percentage is actually irrelevant. What you want is, what you want to be looking for is profit factor. So you want to be getting that 1.5, two times risk. Because then what that allows is, that allows for your strategy really to only be successful 40% of the time and you're still profitable. So it takes all the stress out of thinking about, you know, what's going to happen in this next trade? Um, you know, is it going to be a winner or a loser and watching the market all day or watching the market and, and checking your phone all day. That, that stress is gone once you accept or, or once you move to a probabilistic mindset. So once I accept that, you know, I only need I only need to win four out of the next ten trades to, to to continue to demonstrate profitability, then the outcome of the next trade is neither here nor there. What I'm looking to do is get my signal and execute it flawlessly, and then manage my trade according to my trading plan. 
So with the bearish pin bar, we, we do the opposite. We get the signal, we enter on the break of the low of the candle, getting some, some additional confirmation from the market that prices are, are, are moving in our favor or moving in a favorable fashion to the trade that we're putting on. And then again, where are we going to place our stop? Well, we're going to use a logical and objective level. We're not going to think, right, I can only risk 10 pounds or 100 pounds on this trade, so I can only risk uh, you know, just half the candle or, 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 or anything like that. What we're going to do is we're going to think from a logical, rational, objective perspective where we're going to place our stop. Well, above the high of the candle where we've witnessed on the last test overwhelming supply in the market. Does that make sense, guys, in terms of what the signal is, what we're looking for on the, on the chart, the candle, the makeup of the candle, the DNA, and then how we're going to use that candle to execute a trade? Why in the chat box if you're awake and listening to this? Good stuff. Okay, right. Let's uh, let's just move in. Uh, here, here's here's, here's a, a couple of things we're going to look at now with the pin bar because what happens is once once people see this pin bar, and this is where most traders come and start with this this uh, this this approach or this strategy, is that once you know what a pin bar is, you see them everywhere on the chart, and if you trade every pin bar, you will liquidate your account. Given absolute fact you can the pin bar in and of itself whilst it is an excellent signal you need some other confirming factors to make that signal profitable over time because if you just take every pin bar like i say you'll see them all over the charts now that you're aware of them and it you know it is a it is a great signal and you may see a streak of, you know, a lot of winning, uh, winning pin bars on the chart, and then just think, right, the next one that comes up, I'm taking. That would be an error, because uh, that, the streaks in terms of success of these patterns are, are 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 well known. What we're looking to do is increase the probabilistic outcome of taking a, a pin bar as a as a trade. So one of the things that, that people do is, like I just said, is that people think that every pin bar is uh, is, the, is their next lot, lottery ticket. Where in reality, what you've got to do is you've got to become quite picky about the ones you take. And you've got to learn to be able to differentiate between a strong signal and a weak signal, okay? Now on the screen at the moment, we can see a couple of examples. Of, well, we've got two, two strong examples. Well, we've got three pin bar examples on the screen. Two of them meet the criteria of being a strong signal. The third one is, is, is weak and, uh, and has a lower probability outcome. So in this first instance on the left-hand side here, we have a candle, a bearish candle that closes uh, at the lows. We then get a bullish inside candle, which is the white candle next to the big black candle. So that shows that we've, we've once again, we've, we've tested into the lower range um, versus the, the prior day's candle, and some buyers have emerged, okay? And then on this following day where we get the pin bar, we break that, that we break the two-day range, we seek lower prices, and then intraday, if, we, if these are, are daily candles, intraday, the buyers have stepped back in. Big demand is a, a, a big demand, could be a news event, whatever. But big demand has come into the market, and we close back within the prior range, okay? So to me now, if I'm looking at a chart, where do I think the next level, where are the stops that are likely to be run at this point that will act as fuel for a move? Well, I would say that they're above the, uh, the inside day uh, candle and, uh, and as such, we'd be taking a trade there, we'd be entering at the close of the candle or just a, a tick above the high. And where logically do we want to place our stops? Well, we know now, just below the low of, uh, of that big demand spike that we saw. Then uh, the next example, two day, two bearish days, we close at the lows, um, testing lows of the range. And once again, we break down through those lows and then big demand comes into the market. And then we actually take out on the close the prior day's high. Okay, very bullish signal. So we're going to put our stops below the low of the, that demand spike. 
That's the rational, objective, logical place because price could test back down into that low, but because we've seen such a scale of demand there, we're going to bet that it's going to hold on the next test. Okay. Probabilistically, that's a fair assumption. We don't know, but probabilistically, fair assumption. And we're going to enter on the break of the highs. Now, let's look at the third example, because here's where you come unstuck. We get that bearish close, we get the bullish inside day, we open up, we trade down, and yeah, demand certainly comes into the market. We trade back up to retest the prior day's low, but we are rejected the sufficient supply there to mean that we close below the low of that prior day. So from a technical perspective, again, in terms of closes, we're making, we, we're getting lower closes and then we're getting lower highs. So technically, the trend to the downside is still pretty much intact. Does that make sense? So it's important that we understand that not every pin bar is made equally and that we, we're seeking to really identify the DNA of the candle and we're working to develop a technical scorecard whereby we know that some pin bars offer a higher probability outcome than others, okay? Now, one of the things that you uh, that, that is important to look for in a pin bar in terms of uh, suggesting, again, if we're working on that idea of uh, overwhelming demand or overwhelming supply, the length of the tail. Because what does that tell us? Well, a couple of pieces of information from that. As we've traded down during the day, you know, we've tested much lower prices. The scale of the demand that was put into the market meant that we've had to trade so much. We've traded quickly back through those prices and tested back up towards the highs of the day. So we, what we're getting when we see that the bigger the tail, the bigger the demand shock or supply shock to the market, okay? And then again, that idea of closing back within the, within the range of the previous candle adds extra confluence to the trade. And again, what we're always trying to do as traders is trying to build a case pretty much like a lawyer. We're looking for evidence in the market and we're looking to put that evidence into a thesis that gives us a trading signal. So the more we can stack in our favor in terms of um, positives, technical positives for the trades, the higher our conviction is going to be in the trade. But again, as is the, the reality of trading, we can do everything right. The trade can be an absolute peach of a setup, but can still be a loser. And it's important, incredibly important, that we accept the risk when we put the trade on. Because what that's going to mean is that we're not going to be there sitting uh, on our phone, sweating every uptick and downtick. It means that we accept the risk, we put our trade on, and we'll see what happens. Okay? Let's look at a bearish example. We can see here price moves up into a, a swing high. We get some selling, but we don't take out the prior day's lows, so that gives us that bearish candle. Then we get bulls retesting the highs, and then we get that upside breakout. And what happens? Big demand shock, a uh, big supply shock. Supply comes into the market, we close back within the prior day's range. We've run all the stops above the market. So the natural progression from this stage, given normal market conditions, will be that we'll rotate lower to test demand at lower levels. And that's what happens. Now, what we've talked about so far is using the pin bar as a reversal signal, okay? What we're going to talk about now is using the pin bar as a continuation signal. If we go back to this uh, prior slide, you can see that we had that big move up uh, just prior to, to uh, two candles prior to the, the one that I've highlighted. We've got that big bearish candle. So we prices tested higher, some sort of demand shock came into the market. But the trend, the overriding trend at that stage being to the downside, meant that we closed back at the lows. And that's what we call a pin bar continuation setup. Okay, we'll look at uh, another one that I've marked up here. You can see we're in a downtrend. Prices are moving down, testing lower levels. 
normal rotations. Uh, then we get a short-term demand shock. It could be a news event again. Some new material information came into the market, which meant that traders looked to cover their short positions quickly. We got that spike higher. But lo and behold, the sellers were waiting and we close at the lows of the day. Now, in that instance, we're, what we're seeking to do with the pin bar here is to use the pin bar as a signal of continuation within the trend. Okay. And we're going to trade in the direction of the pin bar and also in the direction of the trend. But as with all things, it's, you know, certainly in, in, in life, um, and certainly in house hunting, it's a very common phrase, location, location, location. Um, same is true in trading. We're always got to, we've always want to be thinking about our location. Because here, if we look at this chart, we have three continuation pin bars which have occurred in an uptrend. But because of the location and that overhead resistance, the pin bars have failed. So what we want to be thinking about when we're, we're looking at our, our pin bar setups is really a couple of things. We're looking at the DNA of the candle, and then we're thinking about the location of the candle within the current price action. And we want to, to see that you know, these candles with the tails we know are giving us better trading information because they suggest a bigger shock in terms of supply or demand has occurred in the market. These smaller candles within dominant trends tend to fail. And there, you know, there is a, a there is an a, a additional strategy. We're not gonna have time to cover it today, but you can actually play pin bar failures um, once you're able to identify trends and um, and those those also work. But for the purpose of today, what we're gonna look at now is I'm gonna walk you through some, some examples of the pin bar reversal strategy and um, and the pin bar continuation strategy. Um, hopefully you can see my charts on the screen at the moment. Let's go to this Euro chart here. Now, as with last week, um, and hopefully you will, uh, you'll you either have time to watch the video or you, uh, you're you in the session, I have a, a, a core template, a technical overlay um, for my charts, and um, and it's premised around, on the actual charts are the um, these volume weighted average price bands and um, volume weighted average price is overlaid onto the candles. My candles are colored, not whether or not they're bearish or bullish on the day, this is a daily chart, all the charts I use are daily, um, not whether, whether or not we close up or down on the day, it's whether or not we close above or below the near-term volume weighted average price. Now, why do I use that? Well, what I know, um, is that if we close above the near-term volume waste average price, and this is a, I use a five-period look-back to give me uh, an, a, to identify the near-term money flow in the market. So if, I'm, if we're closing above the volume waste average price, that tells me that over the past five days there have been more upticks in the market than downticks. Now. We can't use the volume waste average price as you would do if you, we were using an exchange traded product. Um, like uh, e-mini S&P futures or, or equities. But we can use it in terms of through our broker, whoever our broker is, um, or in this instance, if, if you're using Tickmill, what we're looking at is their data feed in terms of the amounts of buyers they've had in, a, in, a, um, in an instrument versus the sellers. So when we look back at the last five days, if my candle closes above the five period, what it's telling me is, over the last five days, there have been more buyers in the market than there have been sellers. Okay, so that's why I use this. That the volume weight average price gives me a, a, a real, a reliable read on money flow, and then the volatility bands, these these bigger bands you can see here above and below the market, they give me a statistical edge because what we know is that when we test up into the volatility resistance bands, these are two to three standard deviations away from the mean, which is the 20 period look back, that from a statistical perspective, 80 to 90% of the time when we test these levels, price will pause. It's not necessarily going to reverse, but if we test these levels and sellers step into the market, then we've got a statistical edge in a mean reversion setup whereby we should test the um, central tendency which is the 20 period here, and, um, and if we 
breakthrough there, then we've got a high probability of testing um, the alternative side of the bands, which is the two to three standard deviation support or two to three standard deviation resistance. So that's what I've got on my screen here. This bigger, thicker line running through gives me an idea, bearing in mind I'm trading the daily charts. I want to be aware of the trend on the higher time frame. And for me, the higher time frame is the monthly chart. And this tells me um, the volume weighted average price, what it's been doing uh, uh, on a monthly scale over the past five months as there's been more buying or selling pressure in the market. Okay, so that's what we've got on the main screen here. I've also got a pin bar indicator. Now, um, I have, I've, you know, as you're probably aware now, I have these um, indicators have been developed for me um, for specific settings that I want. Um, so they're proprietary. You can um, separately acquire them. But um, I'm not, I'm not here to tell you indicators. What I'm, what I'm saying is that there are a bunch of there are a bunch of pin bar indicators out there. So this isn't anything special. That's my point. Okay, so the, you know, you, I'm sure you can um, independently search the internet, and you'll find a myriad of pin bar indicators. And um, I'm, I'm again, I'm not suggesting that mine is the uh, be all and end all. It just works for me because I've got specific settings I wanted in there. And one of the the things it does for me is it allows me to identify the ratio of the body to tail. So if we get if we think about the, the candle. Um, let's just blow one up here, and so you know, you'll see exactly what I mean. Let me go here. So with this candle here, what what the what my indicator is telling me immediately, so I don't have to scour through and measure each candle. It's all done automatically for me. Is it's telling me that the body of this candle. It has a ratio to the tail that exceeds two to one. Okay, a minimum. Of, I'm looking at a minimum of two to one. Remember, we were saying that you know the bigger the tail, the, the higher probability the outcome is. Um, for me, statistically, going back through uh, back testing of, uh, thousands of these, a minimum requirement for me in terms of taking a trade is a two to one ratio. So that's all that this. The indicator basically plots for me automatically will print up, uh, will, will pop up on the screen if I've got a pin bar that has a ratio of two to one. Okay, then all it does is gives me gives me specific trade levels, gives me an entry point, which is the close of the candle. For me, that's how I trade them. Um, some people prefer a bit more um, price information, premium in terms of playing the break of the candle, but I've found over time just trading the close is fine. I've got a stop just below the low of the candle. Um, because this candle is a little bit smaller, the, the, the X that marks the spot, uh, the stop, sorry, is uh, is touching the end of the candle. But you can see here, I, I just use a few pips below the low of the candle, basically. Okay, so it automatically plots that. It then gives me one times my risk, which is the first green dot, and then two times my risk, which is the second green dot. Okay, so as always, what I'm looking to do is once I put my position on, once the trade moves in my favor, one times my initial risk i'm not going to let that trade come back and stop me out for a loss okay it's just bad business so once the trade moves in my favor one times my risk i'm not going to allow that trade to turn into a loser it works on from both a, a, a financial and a psychological capital perspective you know i don't want to see a trade run in my favor and then lo and behold it come back a few hours later and i've taken a full hit on it just bad business and it's not good psychologically on an ongoing basis to see that happen so that's why i have that rule so once we trade one times my risk once the market has uh, validated my position i move by by take by moving the amount i've risked in my favor i'm going to take my risk off the table okay and then i've got a risk-free position it is either going to run to two times my risk or it's going to move back and stop me out uh, at break even okay so that's the basic rule that i'm applying here so that's the, the, the pin bar indicator. I, I, as most of you know, uh, this, this, the studies, the momentum studies to the downside here on the lower panel, sorry, to the downside, um, are uh, the RSI stochastic available on pretty much any platform. Um, and then I have something called a psych indicator, uh, fancy name really for something quite simple. It's, it's, a, it's an enhanced version really of the RSI. Okay, it just has a few tweaks which make it more effective for me. It's colored 
Um, and the reason why I call it psych is that when the when this goes down through these levels and turns red, more often than not, counter trend traders will be will be going in the opposite direction. They'll be immediately trying to trade against this developing trend. And so I just have a, there, there, all this stuff is color coded because when I pull up a chart, I don't want to spend my day scrolling through the chart, looking for the signal, then trying to track everything and see if everything syncs up. It's all done for me here. It's color coded again. Proprietary indicators they are available if at some point you wanted to try them out for yourselves. But there are other indicators out there that do pretty much the same thing. But this is just something that has worked for me over the past uh, past 15 years, and so it's all color coded, makes it nice and simple for me um, because I want an easy life. Um, so that's that's the, the technical setup of the chart. Now what I'm going to do is we're just going to walk through. Let's go. We'll just take a this, this last year basically. Um, this is the euro dollar daily chart, and we're just going to look. First of all, I'm going to look at the reversal signal. Now, what what for me? qualifies as a pin bar reversal because it's because it is not just the pin bar i have a couple of other criteria i use i want price to at least be up testing into this two to three standard deviation or from a support perspective testing two to three standard deviations okay so that's important because that as i've just mentioned gives me a statistical edge but also it's it gives it, it more often than not will give a good trade location, a good entry point. So I'm looking for a test of the two three standard deviation, and or if we don't quite make the two three standard deviation, then I want the cat the pin bar to be in the direction of the higher time frame trend. So in this instance, as we come into 2019, first piece of information I've got is that the monthly trend is down bearish okay so what i'm looking for is a pin bar that tests the two to three standard deviation and what i've also got here are these dots these dots just basically tell me have i got a bearish pin bar or a bullish pin bar printing on the chart so price rotates we go through we trade through january we get into february and we make a low trade down into the two to three standard deviation and in this instance i get some extra confirmation this i don't require this but certainly when I get all of these um, factors sync up, then I'll probably increase my position size. And that extra piece of confirmation here is that the pin bar that tests the two, three standard deviation support coincides with a close back above the near term volume waste average price. So not just am I getting the technical signal of the pin bar, I'm also getting this sense that the money flow is starting to shift in the market. So I'm getting that, that that's my, that, those are my first pieces of confirmation here that, you know, are telling me this setup's got merits. Next two are that um, the, on this test from a sentiment perspective, looking at the side, we had some divergence as we traded into this low. I'm going to cover divergence in more detail next week, but just that's one piece, that's another piece of information. And then we also have the RSI stochastic positively diverging to the upside after testing below that 20 percentile level which if we think back to the swing strategy we covered last week suggests stretch in the market okay so what i've got here are a bunch of factors telling me that this pin bar is worth the risk yeah so i'm happy from a probabilistic perspective i've ticked enough boxes to put the position on okay Enter the trade at the close, trade higher, bit of rotation, bit of supplies, we trade back into the highs. Ultimately, we test up into two times, uh, sorry, one times my risk reward. So what do I do at that point? Risk off the table. Risk-free trade, and I'm happy just to watch what happens next. We trade up, we move up into coming up towards the profit taking zone, but we don't quite achieve it. So I'm watching the market and what do I get? Well, I get a pin bar reversal, a bearish pin bar. Okay. So what do I do? Well, this trade is risk free. So I can put another trade on quite comfortably without exceeding my, uh, my risk profile. And what's going against this? Well, we didn't quite test the two to three standard deviation resistance. We have got a crossover a bullet a bearish crossover using our um, momentum indicator 
and Syke is still saying this market is bearish, as denoted by this red line. Okay, so I, I can't tick all the boxes, but the candle size, the location works, and so I can put that trade on. Okay, and then what happens on the next day? Well, come in and we test higher, and then we get another pin bar. Now, this one has come considerably closer to testing two, three standard deviation. But what we have in favor now is that we're getting that money flow signal. We're closing below the five period moving average. Okay. And then we, so we, we, we have the opportunity here to put another position on if, we, if it fits within our risk reward profile. And we watch and wait. Trade down, both trades get risk free, and ultimately then we trade lower and straight into our profit target of two times risk reward. By the way, we did get stopped out of this first trade, but it was a risk free break even exit with two winners here at two times our risk reward. Then what do we do? Well, we're back to watching the market to see where, when we get a signal. Price test two, three standard deviation, no pin bar. Two, three standard deviation, no pin bar. Close to two, three standard deviation. Some people would have called that a pin bar here, but it didn't meet my minimum criteria, so no trade, nothing for me to do. Up into these high, uh, testing up towards two, three standard deviation, and we get a pin bar here, but it's a, um, it's a bearish pin bar against bullish money flow, and we're quite a way away from that, fi that five period look back. That's a pass for me, those trades. I'll take it, I don't mind if we close at or near the five period volume weights average price in terms of looking at, uh, looking at the short setup, but in this instance we don't, so I'm back to watching the market, and then we get a bearish pin bar reversal, we get the RSI stochastic rolling over, bearish sentiments from Psyche, bearish monthly signal, close to two to three standard deviation, back close down towards the money, uh, towards the five period, and so that ticks the boxes or ticks enough boxes for me to take the risk. Trade moves down one times my risk and also me two times my risk. Yeah, following along. So we're back to watching the market. We're now in April, uh, price moves down, we test, watching, watching the volatility bands for price tests. We see multiple tests, but we don't get any pin bar signals. We haven't got any green or red dots. Um, the next signal we actually get is that we were waiting now until August, okay? And we get a bullish pin bar. We're testing into the two to three standard deviation. We've got some divergence in sight. We've got positive divergence in terms of the RSI stochastic, close to the money flow, but we've ticked another box here, which is testing well into that two, three standard deviation. And we've got, uh, we've got some other signals confirming here. So that's sufficient for me to pull the trigger on this one. Trade up, one times the risk, two times the risk, out of the market, watching for the next setup. Bullish pin bar, two, three standard deviation. Positive convergence here, uh, divergence, sorry, on the RSI stochastic. And so again, ticks enough boxes for me to pull the trigger on it. And again, move up, one times risk, two times risk. And we're watching for our next signal. Remember, this is the daily chart. This is just the euro, and that takes us up into December. And here, now, good example. So bullish, now the, the, the monthly momentum has flipped. into the two to three standard deviation. So for me, technically, that, bearing in mind that we've got the RSI stochastic rolling over, that would qualify as a signal. Don't get two times risk reward and ultimately got, would, would be socked out on that trade, okay? So we've had what, we've had like six or seven trades there, yeah? We've had one winner, uh, one loser, uh, sorry, one, uh, we've had four, four winners, one loser, 
and one break even. But the beauty of the strategy is because our risk reward is two, two to one, that means that we're going to uh, we're going to come out on top in the end. And that's just one chart. You've got 28 forex instruments. You've got the uh, the indices. You've got commodities. This this strategy works on all of those those instruments, um, and it's very very effective because I'm not just looking for any any old pin bar to, to put a position on. But I'm specifically I've got a specific criteria that is helping me identify the higher probability pin bars in the market. Okay, um, just checking the time. We've been running here uh, for nearly an hour, guys. I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to complete the complete this session today. And what we'll do at the beginning of the next session is we'll cover divergence and the pin bar continuation strategy. Okay. Are there any questions on anything we've discussed or I've discussed with you here today? Uh, I've got a couple of minutes here. If, uh, if anyone has a question they'd like to ask regarding uh, this, this, the, the pin bars, how I trade them, uh, what it is I'm looking for, uh, now's the time to, to speak if you do have a question. I would also like to say that um, we're coming, uh, after, we're coming to the end of these online education sessions, um, but what, uh, what I want to tell you is that um, starting once we finish uh, in two weeks the, the, on, the education sessions, whereby I've shown you my strategies, um, starting then on Thursdays, what we're actually going to do is we're going to do um, live market analysis sessions. So I'm going to be reviewing the markets, I'm going to be showing you how I use the strategies I've been, I've, I've been demonstrating to you to trade these markets in real time. So we'll be looking at setups, um, trades that I'm in, trades that I'm looking at, and, and how I actually use these strategies to successfully navigate the markets. That's coming towards the, the end of March, or middle of March, let's say, um, but we'll be doing that on these Thursdays at, uh, at 11, um, once we complete the education. So uh, hopefully you guys will be able to, uh, to join me for that. Okay, any other, any questions about uh, about what we've talked about today? Okay, I shall take the silence of suggesting that I've done an excellent job in explaining this to you. Um, ah, did I? Adele, Adele. Sorry, Adele, I... Uh, when it comes to forex, I seem not to understand. You're a beginner. Yeah, I, listen, what I suggest you do is review um, the education. Uh, there's, I'll, uh, there's a link, a YouTube link um, that you can find. Or, or sorry, if you search my name on YouTube with, uh, with Tickmill, you'll come across the, uh, the education sessions. We've done, um, I think, 12, 16 maybe of these in total once we finished. And if you go through each of those videos, um, they should help bring you up to speed um, in terms of giving you a base level of understanding, moving up to this more um, more complex stuff that we're doing now, which is which is looking at actual strategies. But the um, the, the the videos in totality will give you um, give you the good give you a good uh, grounding. Sorry. Uh, do I add to positions? Um, th that depends whether or not I'm, I'm trading with uh, a higher time frame. And it also depends if we go back to thinking about um, am I able to identify whether we're in an impulsive phase or a corrective phase in the markets. So w once we move into these, um, these weekly strategy sessions, uh, you'll see how I identify the market phase we're in. I, each chart I open, I want to immediately know what sort of phase the market's in. Because if if I'm getting a pin bar setup and I think we've just completed a major correction, then yeah, I'd certainly hold that trade and add to it on pullbacks if I believe that we're, we, we have another impulsive leg developing. Does that make sense, Arun? If you think back to the impulse and corrective um, technical analysis work that we did, um, if I believe that we've just completed a correction or I believe we're starting a new impulse leg or we're in the first correction in a potentially a new impulsive phase, then yes, certainly I would uh, I'd add to positions. But what I also say, and I, you know, the guys I, I work with, is that you've got to. You, I think about my trading in, in you know in two ways. 
I've got my transactional trades, the bread and butter stuff, this pin bar strategy, the swing strategy that deliver a, an edge over a given enough series of outcomes. Then I have the structural approach to markets. So am I able to, you know, if, I'm, if, I've, if I've identified that, if I can identify an impulse, I, sh I shared a chart yesterday um, with the sterling dollar. Um, let me just see, I might be able to bring it up and this will hopefully be a reasonable example. Let's see. Um, can you see my, uh, my tick mill thing here? Let's go, uh, let's go here and show you now. So this is a pattern that I'd identified. Um, this is the sterling dollar. This was yesterday. We had a, um, a bullish setup developing. Um, we've popped higher this morning, and and so structurally, do, do I, I don't. I personally, I don't think, from a technical perspective, that this is going to be the low in, in sterling before the next major leg to the upside. I think it, that I think it's too obvious. Is is the first thing. But I think we do have the potential here for carving out. What I believe could be a very significant inverse head and shoulders in sterling. And what I believe is that if that pattern is going to play out, then the move that we saw from, um, from the lows uh, prior to Brexit to the to post election highs, that leg should replicate over here. So it should take us much higher in sterling dollar. So, what I'd be doing, what I, so if I, so th this is where I'm talking about the structural stuff is that I have that level of understanding so that I can think to myself, um, if this pattern starts to develop, then I know that the scope for the upside is significant. So what I'd start doing is not just, I'd maybe put on a couple of positions, I'd put on one for the transactional trade to just deliver that two times risk reward, which is gonna keep my account ticking over. Then what I also might start to think is, I'm gonna put something on here to try and build a position over weeks, if not months. Does that make sense, Aruna? <coughs> if you haven't done, I would suggest you, you sign up here. You can get email alerts for my analysis, the charts of the day, and, uh, and the daily market outlook, which, uh, which will give you a good feel for, for how I approach the markets. Um, and I, you know, that stuff's produced daily. So uh, if you're going to follow along, you're going to join in the strategy sessions. Uh, live market analysis that we're going to be doing in uh, over the coming months, then uh, it's worth being up to date with with my perspective on uh, on the markets as as we stand. Okay, guys, look, we've, uh, we've we've touched an hour there. I'm going to wrap this one up here. Thanks very much for your time and your your patience with the technical issues we had yesterday. Apologies for that. Um, hopefully they uh, have been fully rectified now. We won't uh, we won't have any more issues. Um, like I say, next week we're going to look at the pin bar continuation. And we'll also start to think about divergence in terms of some of these pin bar reversals and in terms of the swing strategy. I'll walk you through what divergence is, how it works, what its function in the market is, and how we can use it to profit. And then, like I say, we'll, we'll cover off the pin bar continuation as well. Thanks very much for your time, everyone. I hope this helps.